Time just can go straight through. Good. Hey everybody, we are live. My name is Albert Corey, and today's presentation is how to start your business. The name of our program is Business Blue Pot business blueprint beacon. We're gonna show you in a series of videos how you can start, grow, and take your business to the next level. This is a disclaimer. The views and opinions expressed are the speakers or author do not necessarily reflect or present the views held by the channel or broadcaster. Please consult your accountant, financial advisor, or legal services for other information. Now on with the show. My name is Albert Corey. I'm known as a business and tax financial strategist because over the last 40 years as a tax specialist, I worked with over 25,000 business owners and saved them over $60 million in tax savings. You see, now I'm empowering business owners to increase their bottom line in profits and decrease their stress, allowing them to write the ticket of their dream. You see, my key to success is never stop learning. And I've invested in coaches and mentors, and I always listen to my clients and really care about them. See, I've always said to start a business and let the government pay for it. It doesn't matter what you start. The rule says, are you trying to move the business forward? You got to go out and go meet and talk to people. See, once you're talking to people, make them feel human, okay? And don't treat them as a number. They're going to come back to you forever and ever. And that's really the secret sauce. I mean, you could be a billionaire, but if you don't say hi, how are you, and make you feel good, then they're never gonna come back to you. Once you help somebody, the world comes back like that. Everything will come to you. Good things start to happen. Now, name of our program is How to Start Your Business. Now, who am I? My name is Albert Corey. I've been in business for almost 40 years. You see, I've assisted over 25,000 business owners to save almost $60 million in profits and more money in your pockets. But guess what? I didn't start out this way. You see, when I was growing up, I was fat and always picked on. Heck, even my dad didn't believe in with me. And this is why I started Profit 
accelerators to show business owners how to take their business to the next level. Okay, because when I was growing up, guess what? There was nobody to help me. And now I'm on a mission to make sure business owners have somebody who's got their back and takes it to the next level. Now, there are five types of businesses. Um, they are sole proprietor, sub S company, Inc, partnership and LLC. In this video, we're going to show you the good, the bad and the ugly um, for opening up these companies, why they're important, how to use them and the good, the bad and the ugly. After serving over 25,000 business owners, I learned some of the keys to, su to success with these businesses. So now we're gonna start with sole proprietor. Sole proprietor by definition is, you could be quote unquote a mom and pop operation. You don't have a company, you're pretty much on your own. You know, a lot of people who are starting out, a lot of painters, um, handyman, you know, painters, construction, realtors, you all are sole proprietors. When you do the tax returns, um, it comes out on a schedule C. So I'm from the tax side, this could be bad because I've seen, old, I've seen so many people, small business owners who went to somebody else and they put way too many deductions on their tax returns and you could get an IRS letter. Um, part of one of the good advantages of sole proprietor is the first thing is it doesn't cost any money. You don't have to incorporate with the state and you can pretty much get it started easily. If you want to start a business, boom, could be so sole proprietor. Um, a lot of people do so spark up sole proprietor, especially in early stages, because they're afraid to spend money incorporated. So you could just jump right into it. The bad side is I'm not a lawyer, consult your legal services. That is something happens that can come after you directly. And two, if you write off a lot of deductions, okay, they can also come back and come and bite you. So those, that's the good and the bad of sole proprietor. The next thing is why do you incorporate? Why you incorporate it is for a couple of reasons. One is, I'm gonna go with the easy one, is protection. When you incorporate it right, and you might have to call a legal advisor, but we can answer a lot of your questions at Coin Associates, is pretty much you're out of the mix. As I tell people when they come to my office, we set when we set you up, most of the time you as a person disappears because then right, everything is run through your corporation or LLC, which we'll get into later. So it doesn't come back to you. Second thing is taxes. You see, when you do your tax return after doing over 105,000 tax returns is, is if you're a business startup, okay. And the IRS will pay you to grow your business. I mean, I've been doing this forever. So if you put too many deductions on a Schedule C, which when you do it as a sole proprietor, um, the IRS computer can kick it out and start looking at why do you have a $34,000, $35,000 deduction, which is just plain stupid. But I see that happen when people do it themselves and go to the wrong person. However, when you're a corporation, obviously you got to use some moderation but I've seen after doing this for almost 40 years is that the IRS really can't key in to the company tax return statistically because what I've noticed after doing returns forever um, on your personal return, it's easier to key in. Um, a lot of people get um, letters, what I call audit letters by computer where nobody's really touching them because they see crazy stuff like $40,000 deductions, you know, when you're only making 80 and that's a ding, ding, ding. But when you have a company just by design, just by design, it's harder for them to pick it up um, on your deductions. So it becomes a little bit, a little bit simpler and easier for people not to see, for the IRS not to see um, what you're doing. Now, thank you for showing up. Um, I want you, if you're watching this below, how many of you want to have some simple tax um, ways to grow your business? A couple other things we also have in it this week 
is we also have in this this week is another special program is three simple ways um, you can increase your profits that they don't want you to know about. You can just go to text taxman to 26786. That's taxman to 26786. You're going to see the same hacks I've been using. You've been using to grow people's businesses and helping them. And it's how I take it. If this is in for useful information, everybody, and you're watching this on Facebook, um, this will also be on my one of my YouTube channel. Please put a comment below or put put number one in the chat room if this information is any good. And on the virtual people watching this, if you have any questions or comments, you could always leave it below and we'll answer them back right away. Now, step one, the first one we're going to talk about is a corporation. A corporation is you file it on 1120S. Simple thing is, is you just can go to your state. In future videos, we're gonna show you exactly how to open up a corporation. It doesn't matter whether you're in Florida or Alaska, all it, it, it's all open the same way. Different websites, just Google, but they're all open the same way. You just go to Florida, you just go year to your state, Department of Corporations and follow how to do it. So you can open up a corporation, it's very simple very easy um you just go there pay the fees and it's done that's it it's one of the simplest things and when you have a full corporation open you don't have to have any partners um you probably still also got to have your bylaw meetings which is pretty much you go and open up a google docs and say like name of my company is cornea so it's just accounting once a month and say hey i'm gonna do a youtube video on how to help tax deductions. Put that in, date it, and you don't need a heavy board of directors, sign and date it, and boom, you're done. The bad thing is about a corporation, a full corporation that you're filing on 1120S is, guess what? If you take, if you um, have a loss, it can't transfer your personal return. Um, any of your dividends can't transfer over to the shareholders. Pretty much, you can only pay on the profits. So that's the bad part is that the losses cannot transfer. And if you make $1, you got to pay 25% tax on the money. So that's the bad things. So I don't always recommend um, people to open up corporations. Um, in a minute, I will show you how I sell best with probably a better way of doing it. The next one we're going to talk about is an LLC. An LLC is a limited liability, limited liability partnership. The good thing is, is, is if done right, it's like a corporation that once you open it up, you're no longer a sole proprietor. Okay, you're no longer a sole proprietor so that now you're going to start to look bigger. You start to look bigger. Um, it can't come back to you. It has its tax advantages because now you can, just like a corporation, you can write everything off. A lot of my clients use LLC, especially doing um, a lot of real estate, okay? A lot of real estate, or you know that you're gonna make over $250,000. In a few minutes, we're gonna explain that the other way. So that's the advantages to do. Same thing, you just Google your department of state, go to where LLC is, click it, you're done, um, and you're open. The bad thing about an LLC is most people don't realize that it's a limited liability partnership. That's right, it's a limited liability partnership. What does that mean that you need two partners? Limited, limited. Okay, just by definition, um, partnership by definition is two. Most people open it up themselves, which means they don't wanna go get a partner, which means is when you start to try to show the loss, it shows directly on your, directly on your schedule C on your personal return. I, please consult your accountants or legal people, but in my world, I don't like it going directly to your tax return. 
you know, it's just not good because the IRS can see, especially if you have a bigger loss, if you have a big loss, they're going to hit you. Okay. And even some states and then LLC, you also got to pay. Um, if you make money in the company, I know, like, I know for a fact that in states like California, um, I know to California, Tennessee, that I know of directly that even if you show a loss, that you still got to pay the state filing fees. Oh, you still got to pay the state filing fees, but you still got to pay some form of corporate tax. That's why I'm not an LLC fan. So now the next one we're going to talk about is a sub S corporation. Sub S corporation is what I always recommend to my clients. Um, the good side is, is that you can only, you can only use, you can only be one partner and it will work. That's pretty cool. So if you're a business, um, you still have all the rights and privileges of a full corporation. So that's always pretty cool. You know, the bad side is, is I've always recommend sub corporations for people that are doing startup businesses. If you're in a startup phase, then sub is the way it's going, the way you're gonna go, have to do it. That's what I've been recommended. But what also starts to happen is most people don't know about it because most blog posts don't tell you about it. Um, the downside, to a sub S corporation is in order to be a sub S corporation, you have to file what's called an 11, 20, you have to file a 2553, which you can just download it. Yet you have to fill it out and mail it to Ogden, Utah. Uh, most people don't know that. Half the people who come to my office who try to do it to open up a corporation on their own because they don't want to spend money to get an expert to do it. They don't know about it. The also good thing is if you come to my office and you're a full corporation that you can send in the form and that will convert it to over your full corporation. You send in a 2553, you fill it out, you send it out. That will take care of it. Uh, another thing that's pretty cool is if you're an LLC and you don't have two partners to do it with, you can still file a 2553. So what would happen is the world is going to know you as an LLC, but the IRS is going to see you as a sub S company. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can always leave it below or call me. But if you have any, you know, sometimes it might take you have to go to your own accountant or legal services, because we're not here to don't, you know, to give legal. These are my opinions, opinions expressed of coin associates. So that's why sub S's are good. The only other bad thing is it's not good um, for real estate because, well, it could be still be good for real estate, but at least not in Miami anyways, because the value of your company cannot go over $249,000. If it does, uh, if it does, then you can't, you know, it doesn't work. But I've had plenty of people who start out with zero. I was one of those who 25 years later makes more than a 249. The IRS is not looking at right now. If not, we'd switch it to an, an LLC. Another, another um, we said about the real estate is it doesn't work for real estate, at least in Miami, because it's limited to $249,000. Um, another limitation, which most of my startup clients don't have to worry about you can only have 14 partners and 15 you can't do it there's all the same rights and privileges as everything else uh what i forgot to say on the llc is you can have unlimited partners you, and also on an llc you can have foreign investors sub s companies you can't you know we're starting to see a lot of that in the miami area with plenty of south america's coming in where they might have one partner who has a social security number, but they'll have multiple partners are foreign nationals. You can't do this on a sub S company. It, you can't do that. If you have any questions or comments, if you're watching this on the replay, uh, you can always put it below and we'll get back to you. So now 
Our presentation is almost done. If you have any questions or comments, you could always call us for a free consultation. Um, please call us at 305-823-9228. Like I said earlier, this is gonna be a series of videos we're gonna put up over the next, in a short period of time. Uh, but if you have any questions about tax, how to open up a corporation, we have clients in almost, we do have clients in 50 states. You know, we have 50 states, so, you know, we're everywhere. You could just email us, hit, a, hit us below, and we'll call you back. You also can call us. I have an office that's located at 1800 West 68th Street, Suite 118, Hialeah, Florida, 33014. So if you're in a Miami area or you're just flying in, you could always come by and see me. We're there every day. Um, during the off season, I'm there from 9.30 to 3. So you can pop in and see us or give us a call and you can find us. We also, you can also get a hold of us by email at albert at 1040w2. Now, if you want to get a hold of us on social media, you can find everything Corey at acorey.com. That's a c o r e y Corey. Um, dot com. Uh, you can get my contact information. There's my calendar link. Uh, you're going to see if you can see not the mouse works here, but there's our Instagram, Facebook, um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can see a lot of cool stuff. And I always have awesome videos on TikTok. And there's my email. My email is albert at 1040w2.com. That's albert at 1040w2.com. Well, I thank you. Um, thank you for enjoying this. If you have any questions or comments, you could always leave it below. Uh, always hit me up on Messenger. Follow us everywhere because we're in, coming soon to cities nearby. Thank you, everybody. And we will talk to everybody soon. Bye-bye. Um, shut the, okay, uh, sorry.